Good morning. My name is Katambari Bias. I'm Noah Park. I'm Eleanor Davarishvili. And my name is Emma Kohler. Today we are here to talk to you about the positive effects of technology within the classroom. 75% of high schoolers in America are using technology within their classrooms. As you can see, this is a very large number and this is dominating our education today. One of the largest issues within technology is the learning gap. As you can see through this chart, the achievement gap within education starts at the very beginning. With 525 words in the child's vocabulary, in children with welfare families, 749 for children within working class families, and 1,116 for children within professional families. One of the ways that the achievement gap is being solved is through technology within education. One of the ways that technology is helping to solve this problem is through database platforms. Database pla platforms are used to match students skills to employers' needs, making students ready for college and a life after college. Database platforms are used to benefit students outside of the basic skills that are learned within their classes so that they are ready for a future career. Another way in which technology is helping to solve the skills gap problem is through more resources. Instead of just a teacher teaching a student some um, information, now we have other resources to pull from when students are learning. There are now polls, statistics, online classes, researchers, online classes, and educators' opinions. As Emma said, students are using more resources, such as online classes, to help in their learning. In a survey conducted by Edna Insight, a marketing intelligence service, more than 50% of all districts across the nation said that they offer online classes or have planned to offer online classes in the future. This may seem like a positive statement. However, every time a student takes an online class, the school loses money. This is because local school districts do not receive funding for any virtual classes that a student may take. Therefore, as, as students take more online classes, the funding for schools goes down. So technology has affected our everyday lives, especially in a typical high school classroom environment. Um, for example, as shown here, it lists just a few benefits of how um, technology can benefit teachers. For example, just to name a few are creating materials, lesson plans, and visual organization of learning processes. And this doesn't only benefit teachers, but also caters for students. For instance, creating materials can tie into lesson plans that capture the student's attention, and lesson plans can tie into visual organization, because many students learn better with a visual, vis with a visual that basically sums up what the material is asking. Um, also, through technology, both students and teachers can access multiple resources through their fingertips. Search engines such as Google can provide millions of resources in fractions of a second. And although this kind of technology can be costly, it is definitely worth the price. To further, to further elaborate, it prepares students for their new future. Um, it prepares students for the new future we live in a world that is enveloped by technology, run by technology, and basically influenced by technology. This world encourages students today to accustom to it and to further develop themselves in order to, um, in order to, in order to just use it out and apply it to the real world. Many careers today have at least some involvement with technology, whether it be minor or major. So. Growing further familiar to it earlier on can prove to be very beneficial. In this study shown here, it says 80% of college students said that through the use of technology, it improved their employment prospects. And although this is a college study, why not start earlier on and get ahead of the game? How many students here would spend an excessive amount of money on an object that was below average or just average? 0% of people in this room. So what if I told you that schools spend an excessive amount of money on education and it may not really be worth it? According to the finance, according to the census, according to the Census Bureau's finance report, in 2012, education expenditures and public welfare expenditures accounted for most of the total expenditures for local and state governments. And as you can see in the graph, education expenditures are much higher than public welfare expenditures. In fact, 
education expenditures account for 28% of the total expenditures of local governments. And as you can see in the bar graph, education expenditures are much, are much higher than public welfare expenditures, insurance expenditures, and utilities. To see whether education, spending money on education leads to higher student success rates, Wallet Hub conducted um, a standardized test across the top 112 most populated cities across the United States. The results were shocking. The table to your left shows the top five cities with the highest standardized test scores, ranging from 77% to 82%. However, their education expenditures are in the mi medium range. In contrast, the table to your right shows the top five cities with the highest education expenditures. And their standardized test scores are pretty low, ranging from 32% to 53%. So why, does these, why do these five cities have higher standardized test score passing rates than these five, even though these, these five spent less money? It's because there is really no association between education spending and student success rates. Although it may seem that technology is causing us to lose money, it's actually doing us more good than harm, especially in the world of education as a whole. See, it is said that by 2028, shown in research, classrooms might just be rid of. This is actually might just help us benefit in the long run, because as most people may not even realize, it actually takes two very important, not to mention very expensive factors to create and run a business, those of which are the building and the people working there. So if we get rid of classrooms, or maybe even most just in general, we could use that money for teacher salary, increasing their pay. So not only would the students be benefiting, getting the opportunity to work from the comfort of their own home, but the teachers would be as well. And getting the opportunity to work from the comfort of our home helps us work at our own pace, giving us a more efficient way of learning with all of our, with our device in one place, with all of our learning tools in one place, data stored just right in front of us, need, not needing to go anywhere. This may just give us even extra time to get the work done much faster, maybe get work done, meet with future employers, or maybe even enroll in extra classes, possibly the local community college. So not only will we be gaining a high school diploma, we could be gaining college credits. It is said that by 2020, 1.5 million new jobs will be digitized. By 2030, technology will pretty much overtake the entire job industry. This could actually benefit us because students can pretty much meet up with future employers or interact with students all across the globe furthering their educational experiences. This will also benefit workers even today in, in the job industry. Getting to work with multiple people at once creates a more efficient way of learning, not to mention also increases and improves social interaction. And as, this, as you can see in this, in this map, technology has benefited our economy in three major regions, considering North America, Western Europe, and of course Asia running on the three largest economies in the world. In conclusion, technology has had a very large effect on the way that education works today. As Eleanor stated, technology can help in the future in creating a bright future for students today. As Noah stated, the environment is also benefiting from technology. And as I stated, it is helping to close achievement gaps that we have been seeing for years and years. Although CAD brought up some very real issues about technology within the classroom, the good outweighs the bad, and technology is a very good implementation. Thank you. What questions do you have? I started writing telegraphs so you got time. That's my fault. Um, so that's on me. That's not on you guys in any way, shape, or form. Let me go through the questions. Uh, we know we're going to start with you. Um, how did you decide how to use the different, like who would cover what perspectives for this presentation? Um, I feel like we all just got together and we just decided on what we were most comfortable with and what, like what lens you need the most of that. Okay. Uh, Kat, how did working with a group help your individual research that you did? Well, working with a group helped me realize like different perspectives that that my group members researched on and what counter arguments that I could bring up based on their uh, perspectives. Thank you. Uh, Emma. In the future,
future, what would you change to make your group norms um, more like workable, more functional? Um, I definitely thought that there, there are a few things that we could do differently. Um, and one of them would probably just to be meeting up more often. We didn't have as much time to work together and really like run through all of the kinks that could have happened in our presentation, which I think I would personally change. Um, but um, that was really all. Okay. And Eleanor, save the best for last, right? Uh, okay. Um, in what way did you improve your ability to work with a group as a result of this project? Uh, well, like one of the points I made in my in my positive effect argument, uh, I said that social interaction has improved because I get to work with multiple people and not to mention getting different perspectives. I get to collect more ideas and I get to improve my work ethic as well. Perfect. Thank you guys.